All right, welcome to the February 20th, 2024 Aries Cloud Agent Python User Group Meeting. Tons of topics on the menu um, today, mostly status reporting or a bunch of status reporting. I want to talk a bit about upgrading. Unfortunately, um, the person that's been looking at it couldn't make today's meeting, but um, we'll go through what he's put in. So upgrading Akapai deployment for an on-creds RS. Um, also a checklist on the 1.0. And also want to talk about mentorships and see if anyone's interested in um, being a mentor in the Hyperledger, Hyperledger Mentorship Program. So that's uh, the topics we have on the agenda today. Reminder, this is a Linux Foundation meeting. So the Linux Foundation antitrust policy is in effect. This is also a Hyperledger Foundation meeting. So the Hyperledger Code of Conduct is in effect. Um, as far as announcements, I've got a couple, and then anyone who wants to can um, raise hand or just come off mute and um, say a few words. The ARIES annual report um, PR has been submitted to the Hyperledger um, Technical Oversight Committee. Comments are still welcome. The PR has not been merged, so if you do want to take a look at it, the link is in the uh, notes, and I can put the link to that in chat. And then I should be in edit mode, so I'll switch over to edit mode after doing that. Okay, um, yeah, the annual re uh, report has been submitted. It's in PR form. Um, the meeting, the report will be discussed this coming Thursday, February 27th at 7 o'clock Pacific, um, 4 in the afternoon in Central Europe. And here's a link to the meeting notice. Uh, everyone's invited to attend. Um, the I've, We did um, a non-creds and indie last week. It was very useful. We're doing other ones. Um, all the projects in the first quarter, and they've been um, quite interesting. So. Um, to attend. Uh, Hyperledger Mentorship Program is coming up. Um, we got really great results last year in the Hyperledger and non-creds uh, non project. Um, we'll talk about that in a bit, um, but that's uh, they're now accepting proposals through March 15th, so coming up. And then also IIW is April 16th to 18th. Um, and I'm sure a few people from this group is going, I'm gonna be going. Um, so look forward to seeing folks there. Any other announcements or anyone want to introduce themselves and talk about what you're doing in the um, Aries Cloud Agent Python community? All right, then. Feel free to add your name to the attendees list. Um, so status updates and on credits RS and Akapai. I know um, endorser progress has been good in the last little while. Jamie, any updates on that progress? Is it finished? Um, I think it's finished for single tenancy. The next thing is multi tenancy. Um, I know Ian put a ticket up for. There's different different stuff you can do with multi-tenancy in the wallet that needs to be looked at as well. But um, it's not something I would have expected would have been as far as I understood, only authors are supported in multi-tenancy mode because we haven't been able to do a, a multi-tenant endorser as far as I know. Um do, do you have a summary of the type of issues that are different between single and multi? Um, no, well, I just looked at Ian's issue yesterday, but for okay. mine, you just, you just have to make sure like the right, the right wallets initiating a non-creds and not the admin wallet. I don't think it will be too much work, but. Offhand, do you know, could you give me the, um, PR, the issue number? I should have checked to, it before. I have to look. Just a second. Yeah, if you could. Um, while um, he, while Jamie's doing that, um, I think the, uh, um, we're going to talk about up updating 
um, upgrading um, to support the uh, the transformation into an OnCreds RS support. Um, the last step, and and really what we're <laughs> the whole goal here, um, the whole uh, important reason for updating to an OnCreds RS, in addition to it being the current library that that we want to support and use, um, is ledger agnostic and OnCreds, which is that we're not tied to Indie, but rather the important thing is we want to be able to use um, an OnCreds regardless of where the data gets stored. And, and so we want to be able to support DidWeb and we want to be able to support Hedera, which is um, uh, a community that is interested in using Akapai to um, root and on creds verifiable credentials in in their network um, checked. We want to be able to support and so on. So the whole goal of of what we've been working on with an on creds is to get to ledger agnostic, and that's enabled first of all with an on creds RS and then the use of an on creds RS. So the next thing up is um, implementing the the methods registry and making sure we have the document. We have examples. Of, of what a methods and an on-creds method res registry is, and then um, documentation on how to add your own. And so that's um, the, the, I believe the final step we really have to do. Um, we really need an example, an implementation, um, and then the documents to cover how to add your own. It looks like it, there is a possibility that the Hedera folks um, may be willing to um, be uh, help us out with that. And so that would be the goal. Uh, that's something I'd like to do. But in the meantime, um, my plan this week is to have some meetings on both the update process and this registry. Okay, uh, Jamie, you got a number? Yeah, so there's a issue 2767. That's for the okay. multi-tenancy endorsement of all the objects that get rid into the ledger and then um yeah okay. ian just opened a ticket yesterday 2792 for saying it doesn't work in a specific scenario that it oh right and that's that those are it i think for what needs what's left code wise for this Okay, thanks, Jamie. Okay. Um, I don't know if anyone is here from the What's Cooking team, and Ian's not, who's um, helping out with that from an oversight and guidance perspective, but um, things are progressing. Another uh, set of commits were done, and they're <clears throat> nearly there with the demo. So I'm hoping for a demo in the next um, in the next week um, of demonstrating the Akapai pieces so that we can tune and and um, sand off any rough rough parts of that implementation and it'll be done. So that's the goal. Um, I know <clears throat> on the Credo front, um, they're making good progress there. They've got a demo running, as I mentioned last time, and um, have made continue to make um, evolutionary progress on, on finalizing that. Um, did Peer and AFJ Interop, um, not much to mention there, as, as mentioned last time, AATH, the tests are implemented for did peer one, two, and four. Um, we've got functions, uh, functionality in Akapai to both receive did peer one, two, and four, and to emit did, did peer two and four. Um, I can't recall if um, right now, if 2748's been released or not yet. I know Daniel was working on it, by the way. I should mention. Daniel Bloom and his wife had a first child recently, um, I think a day or two before expected. So Daniel was a little um, uh, caught off guard and I hear everything went very well and, and everyone's well and home. And uh, so that was fantastic to hear. So he's taken some 
parental time off, which is awesome. Um, so um, he's, uh, we'll, we'll be taking a look at that. Um, <clears throat> Sheldon, any updates on getting Credo working with AATH in this area? Uh, no, uh, n nothing really major to talk about. Still working on the dev containers for AFJ so I can expand okay. the AFJ uh, back channel. Okay. And next, I'm not actually seeing this up here, but um, Akif, you're picking up the did rotation work. Correct. I'm going to be moving through that today. Okay. So you haven't started yet and moving to it now. Yep. Whoa. Okay. Um, <clears throat> low generator, I mentioned it last time, we've done some additional testing that actually took it back to the controller front and added um, connections. So the bottom line is still, we were able to, um, with a controller in front doing pure issuances, get to about 310 issuances per minute across a sustained period. Um, once we did a connection and an issuance per loop, that obviously slowed down, but we, we really didn't investigate why, because it still had plenty of capacity for what we wanted. Um, so things are looking good. We are trying to get a pure verification test done where um, we just hammer a verifier as much as we can. So the idea is that the accreted test would, would be a on startup, make a connection and get a credential issued. And then in the loop, once we get into the loop, we just simply do verifications as fast as we can on all the agents. So um, <clears throat> we ex uh, expect to have work done on that um, over the next two weeks um, to get that done, just so we can see how fast um, uh, verifications can be done. Ideally, uh, first cut of that will be done with a traction verifier, just because that work is already um, known to work. The second part of it will be, <clears throat> if we do decide to move forward, we would do that with VC Auth N. And so that we're um, uh, basically doing a web request, essentially a curl to VC Auth N to get a... Um, uh, a, a presentation request, a connectionless presentation request, and then doing um, the submission of the presentation via DITCOM to the uh, to the verifier. So, lots of good progress and lots of happiness as far as how the performance is working. Um, <clears throat> we can take this off. Work is complete on the DRPC. Um, for those interested, uh, work is going on in Credo to get that done uh, on on the AFJ side and, and then into Bifold so that the um, purpose for doing this, which is um, app attestation, could complete. Um, I left this in. I meant to remove this. This did get completed, and um, Ian did a bunch of investigation, found where the issue was, and was able to fix it not only for issue credential v1, but across the board for all protocols. Basically, made a slight tweak to where thing where events occurred so that um, we don't get into this race condition. So that's good. Okay. Next topic is um, updating uh, to an OnCreds RS. <clears throat> so Ian's put in um, two PRs, one about upgrading a single wallet, one about upgrading multi-tenancy. Um, in those, he covered uh, a proposed process and and. I think we want to look at that process and see if it can be done in different ways. So um, I am kind of pushing towards us doing it um, slightly differently, but I, I don't know if it's a good idea. So that's why I wanted to have this conversation. It's unfortunate that Ian's not here, but I'd like the community to be aware of it and 
<clears throat> to weigh in as much as possible to guide us in this. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, the data to be upgraded is uh, revocation objects, the schemas and cred defs, and the private keys. Unlike the previous upgrade that was done um, from the NDSDK to ASCAR, there's way less data. And basically all we're doing is iterating through a set of records and updating those records to, to move things around as opposed to um, fundamental changes in them. So there's way less data, um, a lot less work to be done. Um, Ian's proposal is we have an upgrade script to migrate from ASCAR, uh, in the SDK to ASCAR. We we use that as the model um, to upgrade from ASCAR to ASCAR and on creds. And um, we use the similar idea. Now, the core concept of that is, um, is, is this idea that you, um, core idea is that you bring down the entire um, deployment of Akapai, you run an upgrade in a single process, and then you um, start uh, restart the deployment. Um, and, and 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 so that that's basically the idea. I'm wondering if if we can do it in a whether that's the best way to do it or or whether we should look at doing it in a way where um, we bring up uh, a, a new controller, migrate all of the options and then um, and then allow the allow things to carry on forward so that we don't have that um, process where we take everything down, upgrade and, and move forward. Now, Wade, um, this is where where you should weigh in and where anyone who has operated a production deployment needs to needs to have their have their say in is that the easiest way to do things is that a relatively easy way to upgrade is is it, it enforces downtime but um from a a practical use is that a good way to do things i guess it does allow you to back up the database so that if anything goes wrong you've got a restore capability yeah there's a process that we have when we're doing the indie to um ask our migrations so um it involves a couple different steps one of them is scaling the the akapai instances down um to ensure that uh, there's no changes to the database or no access to the database when the uh, when you doing the backup and and migration. Yeah, and I just remembered why, <laughs> as I was sitting there saying all those things, I'm thinking, well, that's an obvious way to do it. That's easy. The big problem is multi tenancy, and I, and I yeah. that's the big in this release. Um, we've got to upgrade the controllers. Um, there's no avoiding that. And if we're uh, a traction type deployment um, <clears throat> has to be done in sync, and that is a lot harder. You really like to be able to have um, each uh, each tenant upgrade on their own. And in order to do that, you basically have to let the controller do the upgrade as opposed to the uh, <clears throat> the operator of the instance. So we may not have a choice as I think about it. So um, we really, we may need to really investigate a way to do it on a, have the controller operate the, um, the upgrade, execute the upgrade. Okay. Yeah, um, if, the if the controller was to execute the upgrade, that would be pretty complicated. Okay, we got to think about what that would be, because there's, you know, <laughs> this goes back to our history, Wade. Uh, you and I back to the old um, justice days, where 
where we needed to upgrade all of the different projects that were using a common server and how impossible it was to get everyone to sync up at the same time. And mm -hmm. I think with an instance like Traction, I don't think we have any choice. Yeah, we'll definitely have to have a conversation about it. Okay. Anyone else um, operating a multi-tenant instance that wants to participate in that and can can help us with with their experience? Okay. All right. Um, so that's going to be the big question. We'll talk about that just down here. Side issue. Um, we have two repositories, Aries Akapai Tools and Aries Akapai Controllers. Would it be, what do people think about the idea of extending the definition of what goes into the plugins repository to include Aries Akapai Tools and Aries Akapai Controllers? Aries Akapai Tools is right now only is the Indie SDK to ask our script. That's all that is in there. And in fact, it's at the root of the repository, which is a little odd considering it's called tools because it's the only tool in there, but we just for expediency, let it go with that. As soon as we do this ASCAR to ASCAR and on creds, and if we add it as an upgrade path into Akapai tools, then we'll have a second. Aries Akapai controllers is example controllers. Would it make sense to move those into the plugins repository as not Python plugins, but plugins to Akapai, things you would add to Akapai? Um, are we too far down the path of what plugins is to, <laughs> to allow for that? I'm kind of worried about the repo just getting like too big to manage, like, Right now, it kind of has a specific thing that it's trying to manage, but. Um, um, I'll throw an opposite lens on it. <laughs> uh, yeah. Like controllers, it would actually make it easier to then uh, keep the controllers up to date. Because right now, like, because it's separate and I don't think a lot of people are keeping track of it, sometimes like depend upon updates and things like that or like. Um, become a bit of a challenge and yeah. realistically the controllers don't work outside of the context of Akapai so they have to be it makes sense for them to be somewhere where they're like co-located mm -hmm. just from a maintenance perspective but yeah I totally can see where Jamie's like um, coming from too <laughs> yeah. I mean this is these are not huge um, so we've got basically two demos. Um, the Alice Faber is got three controllers in three different flavors. Um, whereas, and, and then we've got this fourth flavor, which is a traction controller. Um, so that's within those. And as I mentioned in the tools is simply the conversion script as it is today, a migration script from Akabai Indie SDK format to Aries Ascar. Um, depending on what we do with the next step, we could be moving to that. Uh, Emiliano. Uh, I think I second um, Jamie's thought there. Uh, I would be concerned about like the both the repository becoming too big and unfocused to maintain. Uh, and also going on the unfocused team, like, I don't know, a demo controller versus a plugin that in theory is supported to be in production seems to be fairly different a fairly different objective so like I, I don't know that there's like it would be consistent enough to have everything in the same place I I hear what um, what Akif says about maintenance but if we're having maintenance now I don't think we're going to have like any easier time no no I don't. The, the code just because it's in the same place it's like it, I, I would be very cautious with that personally Okay. Um, we, we end up we end up having like a a, a mega repo with uh, with sub context folders, if anything, and we already have that in the plugins because each plugin has its own yeah, context folder yeah. and whatnot. So it, it yeah. 
creates more complexity. Okay. Um, something to think about um, if people could noodle on that. Um, you know, obviously the name plugins becomes um, becomes less uh, less interesting. Uh, you you want to rename it to you know Akapai Extensions Repository or something like that, or store Akapai Store, um, where this is where you get all of the all of the things in addition to Akapai, so that we we limit it down to those. But that's the idea of of whether we want to have multiple repos for those. It doesn't really hurt to have multiple repos, and it doesn't change the maintenance of it. It just means we have less places to go um, for those who are interested in these things. Okay, let's um, put that aside. Um, some of the things that um, Ian raises in the upgrade um, issues, concerns with in-flight credential exchanges, do we allow those? How do we deal with um, when we shut down an instance um, dealing with in-flight credential exchanges? Obviously, again, that um, is more of an issue. Any, any production instance would try to pick a time where either those are non-existent or unlikely to happen, but that all depends on the, the global nature of, of the instance. Um, upgrades will not include going from one database type to another, so SQL to program, Postgres or something like that. That is a separate process and not anything we would do as part of this concept. And then, as I mentioned, the multi-tenant upgrades is the biggest thing. Um, I'm wondering if we can avoid a database update because we're not actually changing the database structure in any way. All we're doing is changing um, data within records within a tenant. We're not even adding records or deleting records. We're simply processing a record, reading it in in one format and saving it in another such that there are different values. Um, the big thing is the controllers have to be uh, updated in sync with the wallet. Um, Ian is proposing that the upgrade actually block the use of the old endpoints. So once we upgrade, um, the older endpoints would not be usable. They would just return a 404 or something like that, not available. Um, so this is required because you get a Kind of a mess in the <laughs> mess, if you will, in the in the records, because if some are, if you can still use the old endpoints, you wind up with old uh, style records along with the new, and you've got to rerun the update. So basically, you pretty much have to block the use of it, so that when we do upgrade, um, we have to more or less block the execution. So probably that means adding code to the endpoints that looks for a piece of data in the wallet or something that is checked on startup and then blocks um, those endpoints. Ideally, we can dynamically remove those endpoints from the swagger. So it cuts down on the size of the open API and eventually we can entirely drop those endpoints um, from the open API. Um, question would be whether we want to do that as data in the wallet so that we say, oh, we've you know, there's some setting, some global setting in the wallet. We have, and we have precedent for that already that is checked on startup of an instance and and results in the blocking of those endpoints or do we use a, a startup parameter for the same purpose? Again, we basically need some sort of global value that says don't use the old endpoints. Um, Multi-tenancy is the issue I brought up before, which is we really need to be able to upgrade on a per-tenant basis. Um, if, a, if there is only one type of controller um, that is operating many tenants, but they're all running the same code, you can get, kind of get away, for, away with it. If you have very few tenants, but they're all running independent code, but you can coordinate, maybe you can get away with it. But ultimately we are gonna have um, in, in scenarios like traction, every tenant um, is 
independently running their own controller. Um, they're all projects that are working it and doing it all at once um, upgrade is is borders on impossible, extremely difficult. Even with there's if there's three tenants, it would be almost impossible. So um, I do need to get this confirmed with Ian that we're not changing the database structure. I'm pretty sure all we're doing is changing the JSON content, at which case it does seem feasible to me that we could have a way to um, uh, essentially, instead of bringing down all the instances, pause the execution of them such that um, we could run a... Um, uh, you know, a single task to upgrade all of the records um, and uh, before continuing. Um, so how do we do that with multiple tenants um, such that we don't force them all to implement? So I, I did a little bit of brainstorming, really didn't think it through enough. So I ask um, people to think about this. How do we implement some sort of mechanism that holds all processing of a deployment of, of Akapai instances while the upgrade is in progress? Um, basically some sort of, um, what essentially comes down to putting a lock on the application so that the, the first instance that starts processing them um, processes all of them while the upgrade is in process before moving on to doing any work a big thing maybe maybe it it doesn't matter if multiple processes upgrade them all as long as regardless of how many process them the result is the same at which case you know on startup an instance could process all of the records and and complete the upgrade and then eventually we just don't do that once it's done but but that might be a way to do it we definitely don't want to put a, a a lock in in the data in the wallet that has to be checked continuously just in case an upgrade might have been triggered. So we need it to be some sort of I, I would think startup uh, happen on startup only, and then um, the data says either you know nobody has started an a, 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 a an upgrade, so grab a lock and do the upgrade or oh, the lock is being held, so um, uh, hold off until it completes, or oh, the process has already completed, so you can just go forward and don't worry about it. So something like that has to be done. So I was just brain, brainstorming on that. Anyone have any thoughts on, on precedence where this has been done before, and is there a, a known pattern for doing this um, where you've got multi instances of a thing like Akapai running a single database, and you want, uh, you know, to have some sort of semaphore or some sort of lock in place. Um, I guess at startup of an instance is fine, so that it so that all of the instances sort of get restarted with the new controllers, and and none of them proceed until um Akapai, uh, the controller and or Akapai can't proceed until the upgrade is done. So this is the conversation we'll have to have this week. I welcome anyone who wants to join that. Let me know, but certainly on the um once Ian's back and available, we're gonna have to have that conversation and and come up with a design that that will work. But I, I'm pretty sure it can't be this model um, just because of multi-tenancy. It's just not viable. And so as a result, each controller would upgrade its own records and and that would be it. Wouldn't be done as a, as a stop everything, but would just be an upgrade process on the records. Finally, um, what we absolutely need is for this upgrade to be successful, we have to have documentation for the API endpoints. And notably, what does a controller have to do to upgrade from the old set of uh, endpoints to the new set of endpoints? So we're going to need um, an example implementation of that, carrying out what's necessary, and then documenting exactly what is necessary. My hope is that there, it's not a lot of work, basically finding um, 
calls to an existing implementation and changing those calls to use a new. Um, but that is to be determined. Um, so no doubt we'll use, uh, somehow use the demo certainly as one way to do it, but we'll, we'll look at, at other approaches um, to document and, and, and make it easier. Um, this also flows into the 1.00 release, which is, is this the bar that we want to set for upgrading to 0.0? 1.00 is, is we have ledger agnostic and on credits completed. And, and so the indication we're going from zero to one means everyone's got to do that upgrade. Um, my guess is that actually is the right place to do it. It's a little bit painful because it means actually upgrading to 1.0 is has a fair it has a higher barrier than we've ever almost ever had. Um, uh, but maybe that's the way we go. We drop we drop Indy and OnCreds, Indy Ascar support or sorry Indy SDK support, and we require upgrading to an OnCreds RS. I'm hoping people are thinking about this and have ideas and opinions. Well, I think you've been on version zero for long enough. Like, it would make sense to do this as one. Yeah. And, and it's kind of, you know, even even if it might be like a higher barrier, it's probably better to have the breaking a breaking change of that entity now with the release of one dot all than then have to manage it like later on a on a minor update. Yeah. Well, it could be a minor upgrade. We're it, it, is... it could be, but what what I'm saying is like since it's so so onerous for for the 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 user of the of the of the agent, like there's some work involved having that kind of clear cut uh, selection of the major release ma major stable release for sort of kind of like yeah leaving it out there i, I agree it's uh, it's probably beneficial yeah. cool um all right that transitioned us into the 1.0 release i realized i didn't talk about early on um, the status of Akapai 0120 RC1. It is done. We um, did the release this morning. Um, the only thing that's kind of hanging about, and I got to have a conversation with Wade a little bit later, is um, rather than having the documentation site generated at Akapai.org, um, uh, generated from a separate repository. I'm trying to get it so that it's generated directly from the Aries Cloud Agent Python um, repository. So we, the, we could drop the um, Aries Akapai docs site. Um, so uh, that's my goal in that. The, I'm, I'm getting a few hitches in, in trying to make that happen. So I need to, to figure that out. But um, in the near future, this will just be a byproduct of publishing a release, um, and and we'll have a, a a way to deal with it after. Um, so right now we've got that you know that ability to do to do all of these past versions, and that's what I'm trying to implement right now is is being able to see the documents at at the point of time of all releases, but do it directly from Akapai versus what we've been doing here, which is um, doing it from a, a separate repository. Um, as far as the 1.0 release goes, um, I don't know how many, uh, I should check that. Um, So we've still got this one, the did exchange, making sure that we're Akapai and Credo compliant. So um, completing that one. Um, yeah, I think, is that it? 
pull request 1.0, we still have the two. So this is the same one as, as related. And then the did rotate. Those are the ones we want to get done for 1.0. Um, this is the question we talked about a bit uh, earlier, which is, do we wait for the and on creds RS? And this upgrade discussion is making me think that we've got to do that. Um, and then finally, the LTS considerations, um, how to do that. And I have not spent enough time thinking about that. I don't, I'm not able to lead a discussion on that yet. Yeah, for sure. I mean, we've we've got upgrades, upgrade processes so far, and and including this as a way to, you know, a, a I'm sorry, I'm answering the chat question. Um, you know, having a way to upgrade a, a a a wallet in sync with upgrading a controller, I think, is necessary. This we we just can't do this. Um, in the SDK to ask our style, stop everything, run the upgrade and, and go forward in any place we're using multi-tenancy uh, seriously. So I think we have to come up with a way to um, to implement it in, in some generic way. So um, we've got to rethink that. We've done two passes with, with upgrades. One was, as I say, this in the SDK to ask our upgrade. The second was um, the upgrades when you go from release to release. Um, and and we've been successful to this point. It's handled all our needs so far, but I think um, it really definitely changes um, when we get to multi-tenancy because we cannot expect all tenants to upgrade at the same time. So we really have to make it so that, uh, you know, unless, you know, unless absolutely forced, upgrades are, are done on a per tenant basis, not on the entire um, database. That is going to, uh, the other thing that impacts that is the um, scheme, which they're using for multi-tenancy, whether you, they're using a uh, database per tenant or yeah. uh, sharing a database across all tenants. So in yeah. the case where you're sharing database across all tenants, you're going to be forced to upgrade everybody at once. The um, but that is only when we actually change the database schema, and I don't think we've done that. So it depends whether you're changing just data, or whether you're changing the schema itself. And I don't think the the, the like the Postgres schema, and I don't think we've changed the Postgres schema in since beginning, but but I'm not sure of that. I'm not even right, sure. But is the Akapai instance going to be able to understand, like the, is the upgraded Akapai instance, which is being switched over to use a non-creds records and structure, going to understand the old records and structure if it comes across it? I would say no. But, but it's wait, not, I'm it's saying not even going to expose the old APIs. What I'm saying is that the um, it's it's just data, if you will. It's not the schema of the database, the rows and columns of the database that are defined in Postgres. Those are not changing. Yep. So that makes it a lot easier for a single tenant to just upgrade its own data. If we get to a point where we actually have to change the Postgres structure, change the rows and columns, that that changes it. I agree, but but that, until that, that means, point, we're okay. That but that means that the multi-tenant Akapai instance has to support both the new and on creds and the old APIs at the same time. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yep. Yep. Okay. Well, this is the conversation we got to have. We got to yeah, see if we exactly. can be done. Yeah. 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 I get what you're saying. Yeah. Steven, does, I think, I, yeah, I think we're fine. Sorry, Stephen, one question. Does Agapai tell us whether it's busy doing something or it's sitting idle? Yeah. There's precedence for doing that for, for semaphores and whether it's doing something. You mean for locks and things like that? 
Yeah, just to or, know whether this is the right time to do an upgrade. Is it in the yeah. middle of something or is it is it yeah. kind of sitting in an, uh, an ideal state and all the transactions are completed? Exactly. Yeah, I, I know what you mean. Um, I, well, I... We need a definition and and what can be done again. Wade, I'll I'll lean on you when when it comes to this. But basically, the the strategy, as far as I know, is you you on a Kubernetes type cluster, you would indicate that you want to transition all of the things, bring them down to zero if you have to, and then start them back up. So it is possible to. Um, bring all of the, uh, define a way such that a, a instance no longer accepts, for example, any inputs and um, completes processing in a graceful way of all the inputs they have such that you can bring it down and then start up new instances that are new style. And the, the question is, can you do that such that everything stops before you start any of the new ones up is kind of the 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 pre, the, the issue that may be needed. Yeah, the only challenge with that is what Wade was saying is if the new release is not backward compatible and some of the transactions are half complete, they will end up yeah, in La La Land, they will they will not be able to proceed any for, further, and nobody will know about it. I mean, that's not guaranteed. It, in theory, there that it, it could be that those transactions can't proceed, or or those transactions might be able to proceed if we update the protocol state object if necessary. So yeah, I'm not sure it's as that. black and white as that. No, true. It depends upon the support for backward compatibility. Yeah. Yeah. Tough calls, tough, tough decisions here. And then the other side of it is the more backwards compatible, the more complicated you're making the code. So yeah. that's the that's the balance we'll try to we'll try to get yeah. to. Okay. Last um Topic. So there's definitely more to come on this upgrade, and and there'll be conversations. I'm hoping this week where we could talk about this because, as I say, I think this puts us as a something we need for the 1.0, and therefore huge priority to get this done. So I'm um, I'm really hoping we can get to it. Um, last topic was the Hyperledger mentorships. Um, the big thing here is a call for mentors. So I was a mentor for the first time this last period. Um, our our project was um, to have a mentee that um, documented all of the cryptography in an on-creds into the specification. So a combination of using the um, source um academic material, the, the the actual documents that um, outline CL signatures, the CL signature specifications, um, looking at the code, verifying the code matches the implementation, and then putting the that information into the specification in a way that could be used by anyone. And so that was the effort, and it really was successful. Um, Eritre, Eritre did an awesome job. He was a, a student in um, uh, India and in, uh, um, and and did a fantastic job at uh, implementing that. Um, so highly recommended. Um, but any project we do requires a mentor. Um, so do think about. Um, if you can be a mentor for somebody who does it, basically we once we got ramped up, so we had some ramp up time, and then it was about every um, second week we got together um, to talk things over. Uh, had a Discord channel. It was Mike Lauder, myself as the mentors, and uh, Aritra uh, as the mentee. The Discord channel handled everything in between. Um, obviously, while at school, which Aritra was, he had times where he could 
focus on this and other times he couldn't. So all of that flowed really well and we got everything done we would we uh wanted and i've been sending out um happy recommendation letters and and notes to people about the great work he's done and that he's a guy who's interested in doing cryptography and rust work and has rust experience and so on so highly successful for both sides we got a lot done on the project but um a reacher got a lot out of it as as the mentee so a couple of things i was thinking of was uh, a full pass over all of the documentation and demos and updating everything across Akapai. Um, looking at MDL support and how we would add it. Um, we've ha had some highly successful work in adding things like W3C credentials, SD jots. Um, do we look at investigating, designing and adding MDL support into Akapai and, and at least laying a path on how it might work and a proof of concept perhaps um we have not uh taken advantage of the fantastic work that indicio did on aries socket dock and and combining it with akapai i would love to see that done so we could get what i would call hyperscaling mediator um we've done a pile of tests with accreta all of which included mediators and we were happy with what we've got but it would be really good to have the capabilities that SocketDoc provides in enabling um, a really scalable mediator where we could scale the number of Akapai instances, scale the number of, of SocketDoc instances, and, and have um, as much capacity as we need in a mediator. Um, tracing support would be an, another one. I think that's partially implemented, but but enabling it so that it could be turned on and off uh, in certain scenarios and we could get tracing out of out of Akapai in an easy way when weird things happen and we want to be able to investigate that. Um, so those are some of the ideas. We've got a couple of ideas in an on-creds. Uh, anyone have any other things that they would love to see implemented but just don't have the time and might might be suitable? I do have the advantage that I spent part of yesterday thinking about these things or last couple of days thinking about these things. But um, that's why I wanted to raise this is even if you don't have one now, if you have any ideas that you can come up with. Um, yeah, it's a fantastic program for doing that. Um, applications are easily written. It's, you know, it's a page, uh, page or so of work uh to to do the uh, or, or to provide the challenge um there is a review process and and um last year there were so many that um only some were accepted so there's an acceptance process um we had something on the order of 35 applicants um to our our challenge and we narrowed them down to a few had interviews and picked one so it was uh, an interesting process. Got to got to come up with a scheme for evaluating and deciding on the top candidates and and um, and doing an interview process. But all really positive and and helpful. So if anyone wants to be a mentor, um, it's a great idea and and really useful for getting stuff done on a project. All right, and with that, we're out of time. So I will save that, stop sharing. And if anyone has anything else they want to raise, you got two seconds to put your hand up. Three seconds. Okay, a few more. Awesome. Okay. Have a delightful Tuesday. And we'll see you again in a couple of weeks. Take care, all. Take, take care. Bye.